You have found yourself on Locked On Bulls. I'm Hayes. That's Pat the Designer. And on today's episode, we'll be talking about the Bulls win over the Cleveland Cavaliers, the immediate impact Alice Caruso had, and then we'll also be ending it talking about how good exactly can the Bulls defense be. All that and more on today's Locked On Bulls. You are Locked On Bulls, your daily podcast on the Chicago Bulls, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And what's going on? You have found yourself on Locked On Bulls, a member of the Locked On Network, uh, your team every day. And on today's episode, Pat, we got to start off with that Bulls win against the Cleveland Cavaliers. It was great to see. Uh, the, the, we'll talk about Alice Caruso. We got a lot to talk about when it comes to that. But overall, how did you feel about this win that the Bulls had? It's a great win. Uh, and I'll say it for this reason. Uh, for the first time in a solid four months, I didn't sit there screaming at my TV about why the heck is this guy open uh, on the corner three? Um, yeah. Why the heck is this guy? And and it, it's not, you know, we're, we're going to say, you know, talk about Caruso in depth, but just seeing how the team reacted defensively versus a Cleveland team that, listen, can get after you offensively, even without having a, a, a Jared Allen and uh, 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 Karis LeVert there, you already know that Darius Garland can get busy. And even though he did come away with, in that game with 25 points, the job defensively that Ayo DeSumo did on that mm. man was to be commended. They had no Absolutely. answers for Ayo DeSumo's defense in that game. He came out and put on what I would call a clinic and absolutely had himself a day defensively and a little bit on the offensive side of the ball. Not going to lie, I would like to see Ayo get more involved in the offense like we saw in that Cleveland game a little bit more. And mm -hmm. I think that he's going to have the opportunity to do that. Here's the thing, right? We have to remember, Ayo's had so much put on his shoulders. Absolutely. He has not been able to be. Like, it's literally like Ayo. You see that guy over there? Yeah, best, best player on that team. Been in the league about five years now. Literally, probably a scoring champion at this point. It's amazing. Not, <laughs> you guard him. Hey, coach, you know I've been starting 25 games. Yeah, we know. Yeah, guard him. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Consistently being put in those crazy positions. And we know, we see Jimmy Butler. We've seen a lot of those defensive-minded guys. When you have to focus in so much on a guy on one side, you can't do the same things you do on the other side all the time. There's very few players in this NBA that are actual two-way players. I can lock you down, and I'm going to drop you off. We're seeing a couple more come back, but there's very few of them. So I want to see the impact that the Bulls getting healthy has on Ayo DeSumo. And in this game, I think you started to see it. With the Bulls getting a little more healthy, he can attack the basket. He can start yeah. taking some more shots. He can get more involved in the offense because there's less on his shoulders. And I, I, I loved what we saw from the Bulls. I get it. It's against a hobbled Cavs team without uh, uh, Jared Allen, but – Hey, a win is a win is a win. That's how I, hey, after after going on a five game skid, whatever you get, <laughs> <laughs> definitely feel you on that one. Like, uh, we we needed the win, and the, the thing is, I know people like you said are gonna say, "Hey, well, the Cavs were hurt, all this." It doesn't matter. The Bulls needed to get the win. They yeah. got in and got the job done. Uh, they held the Cavs to ninety one points. Those things are are great. But I want to go to what you said as well, talking about Io Desumo and the job that he did. Darius Garland, nine of twenty four. For he did score 25 points, but it wasn't e easy 24. When it takes you 24 shots to make 25 points, that's yeah. not a good night. Io did his thing last night. Yeah. And I well, that night. And I'm glad and I, I love to hear that Caruso bigged up uh bigged up uh Io as well, saying that he did a great job guarding uh Darius Garland. I love I love just everything with this team. Love this this win, um, the the energy and impact that we saw as well. And one thing that I do want to point out as well on this, and a lot of people aren't gonna take talk about just because it's not in the box score is the job that Kobe White did. Kobe White did a hell of a job as well. And I think we forget that because he didn't have the scoring night. He didn't have the shooting night, but seven rebounds, seven assists, two steals, only two turnovers from Kobe White. He had a very solid game as well. Stepping in for Zach Levine, who was out in that game. Let me ask you this in, mm -hmm. in situations when we watch that Cleveland game, right? 
We saw DeMar trying to find a shot. Isaac Okoro, also a clamp on the other side, by Absolutely. the way. Y'all give that man his flowers while he's he's getting it done defensively. And Darius Garland, a very good defender as well. And you saw them kind of switching in and out on DeMar DeRozan. Do you feel like this Bulls team becomes offensively stagnant because they allow DeMar to be too ISO heavy? And the reason I say that is even in a win, and I think that it goes to the credit the Bulls defense mm -hmm. more than more than than you know taken away from what they did offensively, but even in a win, a solid, what'd you say, about eight minutes where the Bulls legitimately didn't score. A five-minute drought in the beginning and then about a three-minute drought later in that. Do you feel like DeMar going to the ISO ball, even though he's getting the fouls, he got to the free throw line, made seven free throws, but mm -hmm. do you feel like that's hindering the Bulls' offense when we saw Vooch eating on Mobley down low? Thank like, God. I, I love Mobley, yeah. great player, but Vooch was absolutely like, you don't weigh enough yet, young fella. I'm sorry. And, and we didn't see them go down there to him enough. Do you think the ISO is kind of killing the Bulls' offensive momentum? It does. And I, and that's the thing. I don't know if that's the thing that we need to blame on DeMar. I don't know if that's the thing we need to blame on the coaching staff. I don't know what it, who's to blame for, for that. But absolutely, we are relying too, too much on DeMar DeRozan. And we're also seeing that that makes the Bulls such an easy team to guard. That needs to be fixed, especially down the stretch. Now, we didn't have Zach and Kobe wasn't shooting well. Right. But even in games where we do have them shooting well, we've seen that they have not run plays for, for players with the hot hand to go to DeMar. This team needs to get off the ISO ball thing. Also, players need to move without the ball because it's a two-fold thing. That's yeah. one thing that I've said very a, a lot, too. DeMar can pass, right? It, it, there are some times in which we talk about DeMar's ISO ball, but if he were to try to make a pass, it would have been intercepted because the players aren't moving without the ball. They're sit literally sitting there watching DeMar cook. So yeah. it's a it's a combination of a few things going on, but I do hope that they work that out before the playoffs because that that's that's one thing that it doesn't add a wrinkle to your game and it makes you predictable in tight games and teams in the playoffs are absolutely going to, going to take advantage of that and hurt the Bulls. Yeah, I I, I feel that same way, right? And Vooch had a better shooting night uh, uh, last night that we've seen, but I feel absolutely. like when the Bulls to me go, he he went two for five from three, but but mm -hmm. when the Bulls go to me, pick and pick and pop with Vooch. We have to remember that Vooch is a different kind of big man. Vooch is not, yeah. there, there are differences in the NBA and I feel like people don't differentiate them, right? Like Vooch isn't a shooting big man. He's a big man that can shoot. Can shoot. Vooch's offense starts from down low. You saw him going at Mobley and you, and listen, rightfully so, right? I'm not mad at Vooch, uh, 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 them for, for, I don't, I don't want to say not going to him as much because you saw when Booch was getting the ball legitimately down low, there were a couple of plays where I was like, they are triple teaming yeah. Nikola Vucevic right now. But to me, I want to see you keep going to that because Vooch is a great passer. And I feel like he gets the ball down low, goes to make a move. You see the triple team coming, mm -hmm. and he's able to make that pass. And I feel like when Vooch, you know, he gets the ball knocked out of his hands or, or sometimes the pass is thrown this a little too far out and they knock the ball away and they're, they're going the other way, then it's yeah. like, okay, we can't go into Vooch. And I feel like that's the part that hurts the Bulls because he was absolutely dominating on Mobley. And because of that, they're sending help. That means somebody's open on both ends. You can make the pass. Instead, mm -hmm. We settled for DeMar kind of going for the ISO, not to take anything away from him. He had 25 points, but if we're going to hold Darius Garden to that same standard, DeMar 9 for 26. 25 points on 26 shots is not a good night, especially yeah. when seven of the buckets you got are from the free throw line. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. It's – it. And, you know, this is the thing that, that I have an issue with. Like I said, I, it's it's part of Billy Donovan's coaching. It's part of DeMar DeRozan. And it's part on the other players to be able to move him without the ball. It's, it's right. a combination of a bunch of things right. going on. But I really do hope that they – like, we're not even seeing them – at the beginning of the season, the thing that made it so dangerous is that while it was DeMar in the fourth, it was him and Zach down the stretch of games. It may have been in the last two minutes DeMar time, but over the course of the fourth quarter, it was DeMar and Zach. Yeah. Right. Even that can get stagnant. But at least then we're seeing them even move away from that. And I understand that Zach is, is hobbled a little bit right now, but it definitely is a concerning aspect of the of the team offense. If we're just being honest in how we're evaluating and looking at the team's ball. No, for sure. And and it does. Listen, it doesn't take anything away from the win. I love the win. I'm glad we got the win. Let's keep doing that, y'all, uh, yeah. especially Friday versus Sacramento or uh, Monday <laughs> versus Sacramento. But absolutely. There's there's. 
there's something to be said about just being able to find something that consistently works for you. And Damar is that thing. But there's also something to be said to adjusting to what happens. And we both uh, uh, express kind of, I don't want to say our displeasure, but our concern with the fact that Billy Donovan doesn't always adjust quick enough, at least to me on the offensive end, more so on the defensive end, to what's happening on the floor. Absolutely. All great points there. And we're about to get into that defensive end a little bit more and the, the impact that Alice Caruso had there. But first, we need to talk to you about one of our sponsors, and that's Built Bar. If I told you guys that you can get a bar that tastes just like a candy bar, but it's healthy for you, 130 30 calories, four grams of sugar, four net carbs, and only se and 17 grams of protein. Listen, that is amazing. If you're looking for something that's low calorie, but high protein on your keto diet, your low carb diet, whatever you're doing, whatever kind of diet you're doing, Built Bars fit right in in that and helping you stay healthy, but also helping you stay full, giving you energy, all the type of things you need. They have great flavors like mint brownie, coconut, coconut almond, or white chocolate cookies and cream. That sounds like a hit to me. If you want to check that out, uh, make sure that you go to uh, built.com and use offer code LOCK15 and get 15% off your order. That is the promo code LOCK15 to get 15% off your order at built.com. And make sure you tell them Locked on Bulls sent you. All right, Pat, we got to get into the Bulls defense. And I think be before we do and talk about the defense overall, we definitely have to talk about the impact Alex Caruso had in his return and the immediate yep. energy that he brought back to that team. What did you take away from this game, seeing the GOAT in Alex Caruso return? I, I don't get it. I I don't I don't <laughs> one player shouldn't make this much of a difference, bro. Like yeah. I, it, it confuses the heck out of me. It's like, listen, I was a guy. I, I love studying defenses. I love looking at defenses. And to me, defense is that there is, like people say, defense is all about effort. That's not true. Defense takes a lot of skill. And yeah. Alex Russo has that skill. But there is an element of it. I'd say probably 35% of it is just about showing the effort. Listen, Matt Thomas, Matt Thomas got cooked every single time, but at least the kid showed effort trying to stay in front of a guy. Vooch gets cooked every single time, but at least Vooch is willing to sacrifice a highlight play where his ankles might get broken to try and stay in front sure. of somebody. That means something. Like, And I feel like that effort wasn't there, and it blows my mind that just – Hey, listen, Alex is back. Y'all, y'all, y'all realize, right? The last two times we've held teams under a hundred points, Alex Caruso was on the floor. Yes. That, last night versus Cleveland. <laughs> and the last time we played Milwaukee, when he was on the floor during the whole incident with the other guy from up there that we won't yeah. speak on his name because we don't want to bring animosity to the show. <laughs> War <laughs> peaceful, y'all. We don't need that here. But uh, I see you outside. But um like that that's mind blowing to me that one player makes that big of a difference defensively on the intensity now it could also be i had to ask kid as well i was like it could be just cuz we're focusing in on it right like draymond does have that kind of impact on the warriors but i don't watch 82 warriors games a year you know so so maybe i'm not seeing it as much but it's 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 good to have Caruso back. You see the impact he has. You see how the defensive intensity comes out. And you saw him on the offensive end looking at some dudes like, fam, you shouldn't have put him on me. He definitely can't guard me. So just bringing yeah. that fire, that energy. And I'm not going to lie to you, dog. What was your thoughts on the mix of him and Tristan? Because him and Tristan were both having that fire. I thought somebody Man, was going to get sparked up on. Listen here. The, the 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 fire, like you said, the great word for that, the fire that you see from Alex Caruso and Tristan Thompson on that bench is so stabilizing. For a, a, a team of, of players who are very inexperienced on that bench, it calms them down to have a player at the beginning and the player at the end of that rotation yeah. that really help everything come and they're going to hold you accountable, but they hold you accountable in a way that it's to uplift, right? It's, they don't do the Jimmy Butler, D Dwayne Wade thing when they, when the three alphas were here, where they were putting down the younger players, yeah. they uplift them. They let them know, Hey, we're, I'm going to check you for a second. Right? I'm going to talk to you sternly, but it's because I believe that. And I know that you can do better. Let's go out here and get it better. And I'm going to set the example in showing you how to do better. And the, the fact of having them, and this is why I do think, and I know this is, this is looking ahead when this bulls, when the, the offseason starts and this Bulls team does look at improving the bench. I've always been vocal that I think it's going to be with veteran players because yeah. of how they bring that calming factor. Um, 
it's just great to see. I did not expect. I said, hey, if Alex Caruso comes back, I'm pr- I, he's probably going to only play 12 to 15 minutes. The fact that he came back and went <laughs> right back to the minute output that he was getting before and said, hey, Hayes, hold my beer. I got you for 29 <laughs> minutes in this game. Don't even worry about it. It was great to see. Um, and I think that you see that with the players out there. And one thing that we didn't get to see in this game, I think that as long as Io is going to be in the starting lineup, when Kobe does move back to the bench, mm-hmm. having Caruso out there to set him up, is go- we're going to see a better version of Kobe White now for the rest of the season having uh, Alice Caruso out there with him. I think it. I, I think it's like I said. You know, it takes a load off of a lot of what the players are doing. Listen, Kobe White was going to ask to play excellent defense, um, and that's just not something that Kobe White is on the floor to do. Now he now was he playing terrible defense? No, but I, I agree with you. Where now it's like. You're seeing guys do more. You saw the extra effort in this game. You saw Tristan Thompson tipping it back, fighting for the offensive rebound. You saw Vooch kicking it over to Caruso, and now Caruso's kicking it out to Io. You saw Kobe White. Kobe White skied for a rebound. And I was yeah. like, where's that been? Like, you, <laughs> I, you forget Kobe White is 6'5". Yeah. You legitimately yeah. forget sometimes that Kobe White is 6'5". Until you see him do something like that, you be like, oh, yeah, he is not small like that is a big human being out there yeah so like, it's, it, what, it's six 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 seven kobe white he's like six 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 five yeah. bro like like he he's not small like he's he's yeah. literally the 2k bill where like if you want to shoot <laughs> you know what i'm saying like when you're building your player up it's like he's six six because i want him to be able to dunk but also he yeah. needs to be able to shoot so like shrink them arms a little bit that's kobe white for you but it it, it shows you that and, and i don't know why i can't explain it i don't understand it I feel like it shouldn't be this way, but Alex Caruso makes so much of a difference to this team just based on him being on the floor. I mean, you I, I want y'all to understand this, right? Like, there's been a few games where the Cavs haven't had Darius Garland and Karis LeBert. Karis mm-hmm. LeBert. Here's just some of the scoring outputs. 105 in a loss to Miami. 124 in a, 127 in a win versus the Pacers. 104 mm. in a win versus the Raptors. 119 in a loss versus the 76ers. This team can score. And you saw the impact that Caruso made on every player on that floor pushing them to be better on the end of the floor. And that's what helped you step like I'll say this, right? Offensively, we didn't see anything new. The Bulls have been having scoring droughts, right? Mm -hmm. The Bulls went through almost an eight-minute scoring drought, and in that time, Cleveland scored six points. That's crazy, but it shows you what this team needs, and I think think people underestimate how much the Bulls getting healthy is going to impact the success of this team moving forward and into the playoffs. Absolutely. Now, one thing that I wanted to touch on um, before we end this segment is, and this is just a question because I know it's going to be asked, and I try to, I, we always try to be fair here. Yeah. If our defense hinges on on one player that much, yeah, is our defense good enough for the playoffs? Because that question is going to be presented out there. Um. Yes and no. Right. Okay. Yes, when that player is on the floor. No, when he's not. And is that a problem? Absolutely. Um, is that an? It, I mean, it's a concern I still have. Like, you should be able to maintain some sort of defensive identity if one guy is not on the floor. Now, here's the thing: I will say, for most of that guy not being on the floor, we didn't have mm-hmm. Tristan Thompson. Tristan That's Thompson true. has also true. impacted this team yeah. defensively. So I don't think in the playoffs, if we, God forbid, ended up losing. Alex Caruso again in a situation where now we have to try and figure out what we're going to have defensively. Like you went from like your best defender being Alex Caruso to a rookie. Yeah. So like, that's a precipice of drop off. Like we went from a top five defense to a bottom 25 defense for yeah, a little 28th. I think no 21st in defense. We sit right now. Yeah. And, and, and that's moving in the right direction. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So like, I think that the defensive drop off will be, different but yeah they, there is an issue there where your defense relies on one guy that much but I think that the drop off if we were to lose him again would be a little bit different just because now you've got Javante you've got you, you got to remember when we lost him before we lost everyone yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. and and Lonzo Patrick Williams Patrick Williams may be back by the end of this week Pat 
By this time next week, we may be talking about the return of Paul. Patrick Williams coming back to this team. I need it. I need it. I need it just so he can do something so I can be like, all right, well, can y'all shut up now? <laughs> yeah, that's a fact. That's a fact. Listen, I if, if and whatever Patrick Williams does when he does come back, and I'm glad, and I'm actually happy that he is ahead of Lonzo because we saw him and Lonzo develop quite a chemistry. But what I will say, and before we end with this one, is that I'm just happy that he's going to get experience, right? Yeah. Regardless of anything else, it's tantamount to his success as a player to be able to get playoff experience and for him to come back have a, have probably about 11 games before he before the playoffs to get it in gear and then play in the playoffs yeah. I'm super excited for what that may mean and how that may help as much as he missed time this season to help really jump start his development because playoff basketball as we know is so different for regular season basketball I agree 100% bro 100% all right all right, well, let's see if we're going to agree on the, how the Bulls are going to fare over the course of the next week. But before we get into that, we got to talk to you about another sponsor, and that's Bet Online. It's that time of year again. It's college, the college basketball tournament is in full gear. From all the latest sports odds totals to player performance props to where the next fire coach is going to land, BetOnline.com is the number one source for all your sports betting needs. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and action. Maybe you want to place a bet on DeMar DeRozan winning the MVP. Maybe you want to place a bet on how many uh, points Patrick Williams will score upon his return. I own the playoffs. You can bet on all of that on Bet Online. So you can go to betonline.ag today and place your bet. Bet Online, where the game starts. All right. Let's go ahead and get into this schedule that we have coming up. It's, <sighs> it's, it's, it's not the best, it's not the worst. Uh, we got Sacramento coming up first on Monday. Then we got uh, Utah Wednesday, and then we got Phoenix on Friday. It's all late games. We're going to be tired this week, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so be on the lookout for that. But, uh, Pat, where do you think the Bulls are going to sit, and how many wins can they get this week realistically? Realistically, two. Um, okay. Where do I think the Bulls are going to sit? I actually – I got them winning on any game. I know I have them winning the Kings game. Okay. I have them winning the Jazz game. I think I put on paper that the Bulls would lose the Suns game. But okay. here's my thing with it. Very different Suns team without Chris Paul. Are they still balling? Yeah. Absolutely, they're still balling. There's a lot of talent on that team. They've learned how to do things without Chris Paul being there. And I'm not going to lie to you. Shout out to the former Chicago Bull campaign for turning his game around because the campaign was to the point where I legitimately I, I, fam, if you own the Windy City Breeze, y'all know I watched campaign warm up for a game and for an entire warm up session. He didn't make a shot. Campaign could not play basketball. Well, Muggs was like, did the Bulls miss on campaign because of bad coaching? No, campaign improved. So yeah. shout out to that brother for doing what he had to do to get in there. But here's the thing, right? Or uh, Phoenix is a little bit more beatable now than we've seen. At least mm -hmm. the team that you feel like you can compete with, right? Yep. We saw the Magic come out and compete with them. Uh, we saw the Raptors come out and compete with them. And a lot of times in a game like this, especially with the Bulls, and, and listen, they hear y'all. They hear the, oh, the Bulls have never won a, a, a top uh, a game versus a top team, and they they hear that, and and I feel like they're getting a little bit of that dog back. They're getting a little bit better defense back. Remember, we played Utah before, and we beat them without Vooch on the floor. Yeah, this is yeah. the seven foot eleven guy over there, and Rudy Gobert, by the way. But uh, <laughs> so to me, I think that I realistically, I feel like the Bulls go two and one here. I feel like we beat the Kings. I feel like we beat the Jazz. The Part for me that's the maybe it's the C Red Nation in me. I'm there going a little hard. <laughs> but I do, there is a part of me that feels that this Suns game is winnable. And if a couple of things break the Bulls' way, they could absolutely go 3 and 0 on this West Coast trip and, and really just shut up a lot of the people that are saying that this team can't compete with the top teams in the conferences or teams that are playing at their best because a very, very skewed point of view. You know what I'm saying? The numbers say it. Yeah, the numbers don't mention when we beat Brooklyn, they were the best team in the East. Exactly. They were the best you team. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, oh, when we beat that. Utah, where were they? Oh, they were at the top. Oh, by the way, when uh, who we who we just beat? Cleveland? That's a 16. They were, did we beat them when they were? I don't Not get to mention when 
we beat Denver as well. They were they. So yeah, yeah. It's it's funny I'm how the revisionist history wants to pay, ha, wants to play stuff. But I will say the Suns, even without Chris Paul, uh, Sunday, a hundred and forty points they put up against the Lakers. I mean, I get, I get you. <laughs> yeah. So uh, they're, they're dead. <laughs> I don't, dead man walking. I, I don't dead want man walking. Any team That's with LeBron on it because I feel like you got it. But they're legitimately dead. Like yeah, there's nothing yeah. left with that team. Yeah, and 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 Lakers fans right now. I don't know how many Lakers fans you have in your life, man. I have a lot in my life. Yeah. They hurting right now, bro. You think that that C Red Nation was be, was terrible when uh the Bulls had a five game losing stretch? The Lakers, are, th- those 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 people are bleeding right now. But to stay focused on the Bulls here, I think definitely think Sacramento. The one thing that I will say with this right is that yeah. we've seen the Bulls sometimes not beat teams that they should beat. Yes. Now with having Caruso back. I does he does the, and I hate to put it all on one player, but the intensity in which he brings, I I don't worry about that as much right now. That may be completely me being you know a homer or whatever, but I do trust that they can get past Sacramento. We've seen them uh, play the Jazz before. I, I think that they I, I think that they have enough in the tank um, to do that as well. It really boils down to the Bulls week. Can they go three and zero if they play if they're playing well? That Phoenix game, not on national TV, but it is on NBA TV. What do the Bulls do in this game? And I think that's what the Bulls fans are all going to be looking forward to. I, if the Bulls do drop a game to yeah. Utah, but they win against Phoenix, this 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 week is a win for me overall, right? That they need this win, and I don't want to make it a must-win game. I don't want to say that this you know this late into the season, but it it kind of is what it is. But I really do want to see the Bulls play very well against the the Phoenix Suns. I know they're going to be probably missing Chris Paul, but I want to see them play. I want to see them take care of business. I want to see uh, Caruso do his thing. And because that may be the return of Patrick Williams, I'm going to be so interested to see in how what he does defensively. I'm not looking for anything for Patrick Williams when he returns. I know some Bulls fans are defensively and how comfortable he is. This really could be the game that, that jump starts how we see the Bulls ending, and it doesn't get easier. After the Phoenix game, we got Toronto the following Monday, Milwaukee on Tuesday, and New Orleans on that following Thursday. We're not worried about New Orleans. But with that being said, the Bulls have a pretty solid couple of weeks coming up. The key thing in these is I want to see how well this team plays. I want to see if they do move away from the isolation ball down the stretch where it's DeMar, DeMar, DeMar. You can predict it every play. I want to see that. As Caruso, Caruso already said he was gassed in the second half. As he gets his legs back, if, if that performance was Caruso gassed in the second yeah, half, right. listen here. I'm really <laughs> excited to see what we get from Caruso not gassed. So all those things, I really do think, like you said, you can expect them to go 2-1, and one, but I'm hoping for a 3-0 and week. I, I, and and this is the thing that I look at, right? Like, these are the moments where your team can gas itself up. These are the mm-hmm. moments, right, where your team can believe that, hey, we just beat a team that absolutely is a championship contender. Yeah. We can beat anybody. And sometimes you need those moments. Sometimes you need those moments to gas yourself up. And I think that this this week of games here, right, the Kings game, Bulls should get. Uh, that's tomorrow at 9. The Jazz game, the Suns game, mm-hmm. those are teams that, now the Jazz maybe not as much, but those are teams that people are talking about for championship contention, yep. for championship uh, 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 coming home with a championship. You win a game like that, and then you're going to the Raptors. Now, I'm not saying play down to them, but if you keep your foot on the pedal, which I think Alex Caruso and Tristan being a part of this team, letting them know, hey, listen, these are the moments you need to be ready for. Yeah, You could see the Bulls go on a run here like we saw early in the season, and that could carry over absolutely into the playoffs where now, hey, man, we beat them. We can beat y'all. And sometimes just having that belief puts you in that that uh, a good enough space to get the job done on both ends, especially if you have the talent to do it. And I really do believe the Bulls have the talent to do it right now, Definitely. and they're getting healthier. That's a yeah. different level of uh, of game plan, right there. Definitely, definitely, it's hard. It's hard to game plan for a team that can score. Drop a hunt. They can drop one hundred and twenty. They can drop one hundred and thirty in games. But with that defensive intensity comes back. That makes the Bulls have a puncher's chance, like I said, against any team in the NBA. And I'm glad to see that we're getting back to that as we keep getting healthier. I'm so excited to see what this team eventually looks like heading into the playoffs. But, hey, this is another great week 
for the Bulls to test, for them to look at themselves and figure it out. And we'll see how the rest of the season ends. This is this is the dog days, Pat. We're heading into playoff. We're getting ready for playoff basketball. Yeah. And the Bulls have great tune-up games getting ready for that. And we've already talked about what that gauntlet like in the last in the last five out of six games. But this week, I need to see great showings from the Bulls every single night to build that type of consistency. 100%. 100%, dog. I'm right there with you, man. Also, Bulls fans, do yourselves a favor. I want y'all to understand what Zach Levine had to deal with, right? If they got <laughs> him boiling on NBA TV, do yourselves a favor and go watch him break down basketball. Legitimately, it will make you feel so much sympathy for all the players that are no longer in the NBA, all the players that are no longer in. And see, that's the thing, right? They, I, I know we're not supposed to, like, go at people, but Jim Boylan got his job in a very backstabby way. I feel like he mm-hmm. gets the jerky attitude, and that's okay, right? So this is the thing, right? He's not smart. Can't be. I don't know how he keeps the job. It's amazing to me. Go check out how he breaks down basketball if he's on NBA TV. (laughs) This man legitimately, I watched him do highlights, and he was like, he gets this ball in here, throws it to the uh, the forward. That's a uh, that's a small forward right there, and as you see here, (laughs) jab step. And uh, he goes for the turn. And, uh, yep, right there, that is a made basket. Thanks for telling me what I could see, Jim. What's oh, my God. down there? No play breakdown. Just go understand Zach Levine's pain for two minutes. Don't do it too long because it's like it's like Adam Sandler said. We are all now dumber for having this. <laughs> yeah. He afforded no points. And may God have mercy on your soul. That's how we're closing out the episode this week, man. There you go. That's it. That's it. Go, go ahead and give you social media, man. Let's get up out of here. Follow me on everything. At Pat the Designer. Y'all already know how we do. We got the Locked On Instagram busting. We got the Locked On Twitter busting. You never know. You might see beef bust off on the Twitter. Apparently, people don't like us, but JV's in the building, baby. <laughs> there you go. You can follow me at CEO Hayes. You can follow us collectively at Locked On Bulls and every social media platform just about. But that's it from us for today. JV, we out. Hey, y'all stay safe out there, man. Peace, y'all.